Sup everyone, we're back with more Greatest Attorney Chronicles 2. And it's time for us to get back into the swing of things. And let's see what Hairbrain has for us. Mr. Mr. Clam Chowder Broccoli Head Looking Ass Dude. On the day it happened, just before I began the experiment, I saw a man near the stage. A man holding that crossbow. I beg your pardon? Holy. So he saw... Professor! Did the man have any distinguishing features? What did he look like? Uh, tall. Taller than me, and thin, thinner than me. With straight hair, straighter, and whiter than, than mine. Let me see. One less lens than me, too. A monocle. A rather stylish black mono... Black monocle? But one thing in particular will help to positively identify that man you see. I know him very well. After all, he's the engineer who built my invention. Wow. It's almost like I called this multiple times. The fact that the engineer is probably going to be important. What? He built the machine. That's right. Mr. Asman introduced him to me a year ago. He's... he's a man by the name of... Enoch Trevor. Enoch Trevor? Does this mean... does his name mean something? Members of the jury seem flustered. Not a name any scientist wishes to hear. The man's an abomination. Not a name any conjurer wishes to hear either. Who on earth is he? I'm afraid this isn't the first tale of this nature that I've heard in scientific circles in connection with that name. There's talk of other flamboyant experiments that turn out to be nothing but stage trickery in the end. Obviously, the rascal is after the government's research grant money. When magicians are in need of money, I have heard of them resorting to these underhand tactics. Some acquaintances of mine with experience of such things have have mentioned Enoch Trevor's name before. The man is both an engineer and a magician, yes. We're dealing with an unparalleled confidence trickster here. That's Enoch Trevor for you. Wow. It looks like we're gonna have to drag him in. Is that the end of the trial? Please don't tell me it is. Okay. So it's true, then. My invention. My great machine. It was just a grand illusion. Considering what we've just heard about Mr. Drebber's character. I'm sorry to say that that sounds increasingly likely. Even though no one else believed it, I wanted to. I wanted to believe that machine would function exactly as my hypothesis predicted. Which is why you were so opposed to it being investigated, I presume. I knew that if the machine was examined in detail, its construction would give away my hypothesis. Obviously, I didn't want that to happen. But at the same time... I knew that if it was found out to be nothing more than a trick, than a work of deception, then everything I'd worked towards, all my research, all my dreams, my whole life would be over. I was terrified at the prospect. So you really had no idea then, did you? About the true nature of the machine that was built, and the true nature of Mr. Drebber. I never questioned anything. I, I didn't want to question it. It's entirely possible that Mr. Asman and Mr. Drebber were working together to use you as a means of fraud of fraudulently acquiring the research grant money. Yeah, that sounds like the most likely scenario, honestly. When I announced my invention to the crowds that day, it was the finest moment of my career. I pulled all the levers and turned all the dials in exactly the way Dribber had described. 
When the smoke started, suddenly started billowing out, I panicked. I didn't know what was happening. But I really don't know how the whole illusion was made to work. I don't know anything anymore. Poor, poor Albert. Let me confirm one final point with you, Professor. Do you now consent to the prosecution submitting the necessary paperwork to release your invention from the protection afforded by the Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act? Yes, please go ahead. I'm very sorry. God, this poor dude. He had a dream that he would try to believe in. It would appear that we shall have to suspend proceedings for the remainder of the day now. Lord Van Zykes. My lord. The court has newly been made aware of another party whose involvement in this matter is critical. Yes, Mr. Drebber. Gather information about the men. If possible, I should like him served with a sub subhuina. With pleasure, my lord. No, counsel for the defense. Yes, my lord. <sighs> when we reconvene, I shall be looking for one thing and one thing alone from you. Evidence that the defendant is innocent of the crime for which he presently, presently stands accused. I understand. Good. In that case, this court is adjourned until tomorrow morning. Wow. You're only a few minutes That's off from it ending, but... From the end of the trial for the day, but... Goddamn, there's a lot of twists and turns. October 23rd, 1.36pm. The Old Bailey. Defendant Santa Chamber. Oh, sorry, I thought there was a number. It was just Defendant Santa Chamber. You okay, man? Must be hitting you like a truck. Mr. Norhodo. Uh, y yes? I'm... 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 I'm so sorry. I was wrong. You were right. I tricked you. You trusted me. I dragged you into my mess. Oh, how did I ever come to this? I'm so, so, so sorry. Did you really have no idea, Professor? About what Mr. Drebber was really up to, I mean. About what he was really constructing. Naturally. That machine was the embodiment of my hypothesis. <sighs> of all my hopes and dreams. I had complete faith in it. Alright. In that case, I won't say any more. Now, sadly, the murder accusation accusation against you still stands. So we must do as much investigation as we can before the trial resumes tomorrow. Your glasses keep falling down, my man. Well, thank you for doing so much for me. Uh, yeah, we gotta have a talk, young lady. I'm so sorry for arriving late this morning, Mr. Norhodo. Arriving late? Didn't you receive my postcard? I wanted to let you know when I'd arrive. Postcard? What postcard? I hid it from you, Reno, so it would be a surprise. Well, did it work? I was surprised, all right, especially when she threw me to the ground. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I, I was just so happy to see you again that it sort of slipped out. Maybe we could stick to more traditional displays of emotion in future. Nah, hug, hugs are too, hugs are too non-manly, I guess. I, I say manly just because of throwing someone's pretty metal. Susie's train was late into London, Victoria this morning, you see. But we made the coachman really whip the horses hard so she didn't miss the whole trial. I was watching from the gallery for a while, but in the end I'm afraid I couldn't contain myself. 
Well, I'm glad you didn't. Oh! Having you at my side in court gives me the strength I need to win. So, I'm, um, delighted to see you back in London. Oh, you're too kind, Mr. Naruhoto. I'm delighted to be here. I hope I can continue to be of service to you. Of course. So, what's brought you back? Did Professor Mikotoba not protest? Let's save all that conversation for when we're back at home, shall we? You know I've made one of my most special blends ever for this special occasion. Oh, Iris, how wonderful. I can't wait. Good rest will do us wonders. Sato-san was back in London. It's hard to describe how happy that made me feel at the time. But despite my elation, our tale was about to take yet another extraordinary turn. What turn? I don't... I don't like the phrase turn. It implies something bad is going to happen again. Because not very rarely does stuff actually go in the positive direction in this. Oh well. Investigation part two. Stato. Two forty a p.m. Not a.m. God. Oh, this room—it's been too long. It hasn't changed in the slightest, though. And it's been some six months, hasn't it? That's a long th time for things to stay so familiar. But I didn't know when you might return, and I wanted everything to be as you'd left it. But it has been some six months, it's true. So is your father all, all right, Susie? What happened? My father? Yes, Professor Mikotoba. I mean, it was half a year ago, but that's why you went back to Japan. Because of the telegram you received saying he'd fallen ill with a very high fever for some unknown reason. That's right. So I was surprised to learn you'd be coming back so soon. Surprised, but happy. I think I wrote about it in my letter to you that it was all a trick. My father is in fine health, and I'm obviously very relieved about that. Well, we're all delighted to have you back. It was quite by accident that I've been able to return to Europe, actually. It's because of a very grand conference called the International Forensic Science S Symposium. The International Forensic... That's the same symposium Lord Stronhart mentioned. Anyway, I've arrived safe and sound, and all that matters is that I'm here now. After all, I haven't yet fulfilled my promise to you, Iris. Oh! You must tell us everything that happened while you were back in Japan. Yes, of course, I shall. And there's one other thing. Something you wrote in your letter that particularly grabbed my attention. About you-know-who. About Kazuma. I know. I'll tell you all that I can. You already know what we're doing right off the bat. You're still taking good care of that armband, I see. I'm so pleased. Oh yes, it feels like it wouldn't be me without it. It feels like I wouldn't be me without it now, to be honest. Oh dear, there seems to be a thread coming loose just there, look. <laughs> I'd be only too happy to mend it for you, Mr. Naruhoto. Oh, thank you. I must have scraped it against somebody again. I'm always doing that. Then take better care of it, please. It was all going so well, until I ruined it. It was a tender moment, for, for a time being. Hey, Sasato, want to see a crossbow? This was used to shoot down the balloon, wasn't it? Yes, with a flaming arrow. It's quite a formidable weapon. I'm quite accomplished with the longbow myself, you know. You do seem like the type that would be into archery. No, really? If you were to balance an apple on your head, Mr. Naruhoto, I'm quite confident I could hit it from a good 50 meters away. Quite confident, you say. Does, um, does the apple necessarily have to be on my head? 
not necessarily, but it would be, but it would be make for a better story. Mrs. Sato, do you see this? You have such great expectation in your eyes, Mr. Naruhodo, but I'm afraid nothing particularly useful comes to mind at all. Oh, sorry. I'm uh, I'm not sure what I was expecting, really. You know, we could talk to you, or we could talk about shovels and spades. Thinking back, that spade's been in here since we first moved in, in hasn't it? I'm sure I've told you before, Miss Narhoto, it's not a spade, it's a shovel. No, shovels are for digging, that's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. No, spades are for digging, that's for scooping up loose material. It's... it's... a... shovel. The great spade shovel war rages on. And never will it leave. Just the way we like it. You have water gently boiling on the stove, I see. Feels wrong somehow if I can't hear the water bubble in a way. And we have plenty of logs, it's not like we have to worry about paying for gas. It's important to open the window for fresh air when the fire's burning, though. You can't keep it closed just because it's cold outside. It could be a matter of life or d life and death. Avoiding the freezing winter air is a matter of life and death, too, if you ask me. Oh, well. Perhaps a nice cup of tea will warm you up later. I see your dharma still has only one eye filled in. Well, we agreed that it's something we do together, didn't we? We could do it right now if you like. I'd be happy with that. I rather like the anticip anticipation, I think, Mr. Naruhoto. I mean, you said you'd do it once you think I'd become a worthy lawyer or whatever. It'd be, it'd be such a cool detail if that actually gets filled in, like, sometime during the final case. I don't know. You see? I've been keeping my desk beautifully covered in papers, as always. You really must tidy it all up, Mr. Naruhoto. No more excuses. Mrs. Sato, the way I see it, all these papers building up in on my desk like this are a reminder of my wonderfully diverse daily life. I like to leave them as they are so I never forget how lucky I am to have such varied experiences. In that case, you should definitely have a thorough tidy. Then you'll be able to see your papers building up all over again and feel that joy renewed. Still can't beat her in an argument, even though I'm the lawyer here. You know, I realized something with Susato is that <laughs> Is it with her, with the outfit I have on her, what's it gonna look like? You know the animation where, like, she pulls into her sleeve, usually, and takes out her small book? How's that gonna look like when she doesn't have sleeves? Oh, I'm, I'm so looking forward to making you some tea again, Mr. Naruhoto. Which you'd think I wouldn't like, given that I'm not keen on bitter flavors, but it is Susato-san's tea. And it's amazing what a little cake or something on the side can do. I would dearly love to serve you some sort of Japanese sweet alongside your matcha green tea. But I suppose that's simply not possible given how long we've been staying here in London. Well, I do like the little chocolates you put with my tea. They go wonderfully. Oh, Mr. Naruhoto, you would, wouldn't you? It gives me a warm glow inside for some reason. Uh, oh, Iris is just chilling here. Your room through there should be exactly as you left it. I've still never been inside. I've never been invited. Of course not. Only Iris is allowed in my room. No doubt I'll be hearing you two giggling away in there again then. Well, at least at least Sholmes hasn't been invited in, and it's not just you that's excluded. I'm so pleased to see all our sea creatures doing so well in the aquarium. Yes, the prawns are still swimming and the anemones are st still swaying. Obviously, I've been looking after them carefully. At first, I used to drool whenever I looked at those juicy prawns, but not anymore. They're like part of the family now. I don't suppose they'll ever know how close they were to meeting their maker. Probably not, but hey, them's the breaks, you know. Table. I left your desk completely in touch, Mrs. Sato, so it would be ready for when you, whenever re you returned. It's beautifully clean. There isn't a speck of dust on it anywhere. You've been acquainted in my absence, Mr. Naruhoto. Whatever next? 
Well, I couldn't allow my great assistant's desk to sit there gathering dust, could I? And plus, I left enough mess on my own table, so that makes up for it. It really is exactly as it was when I left. I'm so touched. But sadly, your desk is also exactly as it was, too. Guilty. Well, that's how it should be, after all. Oh, dear. I'd forgotten how that clean-cut smile can be so disarming. <laughs> uh, they, they, they're such a good duo. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later, Iris. Right now, I'm prioritizing talking to my assistant. Back in Britain. When I first arrived back in Japan, I really thought I'd never be allowed to return to Britain. But curiously, after that awful trial at the Supreme Court, Father's mood changed entirely. The awful trial? Oh yes. For the murder of Giselle Brett. Ooh, you dressed as a man then, didn't you, Susie? Oh, well, yes. Since women are forbidden in the court, I had no choice. Wow, amazing! I wish I'd seen it. Don't you, Runo? Um, yes, I suppose so. I want to play at being a lawyer now. I could wear a false mustache, maybe. I don't think any mustache could hide the fact that you're just 10 years old, Iris. I mean, she could just be, like, really tiny. You know. It's about the real reason why Professor Mikotoba summoned you back to Japan. You said in your letter it was something to do with that convict's loot we found in Mr. Natsume's lodgings? That's right. The very large jog collar we found with the B emblem on it. It seems Mr. Natsume included a drawing of the collar in the report he submitted about his time in Britain. I understand that when Father saw the report, he turned as white as a sheet. Why would that be, then? Father came to Britain himself, of course, to study. It was some time ago now, but he stayed for six years. I can only imagine that something must have happened during that time. But if he refuse, refuses to tell me what it was, then I intend to find the answers for myself. And I've decided that I, for one, won't keep any more secrets. Oh, Susie! It's a very meaningful look Sasato san gives Iris there. Forensic Science Symposium. Let's just go down the list, as usual. Lord Strawnhart mentioned something about that symposium, too. I think he said that investigative authorities from 40 different countries would attend. Yes, and from Japan, my father and Judge G Jigoku have been invited. Right, Judge Hell. It's something of an honor, I believe. Well, Professor Mikotoba is the leading expert in forensic medicine in our country, after all. But who's the other person you mentioned? A judge, did you say? Yes, His Excellency, Judge Seishiro Jigoku. You've met him, Mr. Naruhoto. Last year in the Supreme Court. You can't possibly have forgotten. That terrible trial of yours when you were accused of murder. Well, I'm glad at least this time they're showing my frickin' regular outfit and not the the Greatest Attorney 2 outfit. Ah, uh, yes, I, I try to think of that as a positive turning point in my life these days. Well, it was Judge Jigoku who presided over that trial. If I'm perfectly honest, I'd be happy never to see that man's face again in my life. Oh, uh, well, anyway, as far as... As Father was invited to the symposium, he agreed to me returning to Britain, too. We won't actually arrive until next month, but... Well, I couldn't wait. Oh, wait, so he's coming here. Is that it? Ooh. So I pleaded with him, and in the end, he agreed to me going on ahead. Yes, about the symposium. It seems as though Lord Strongheart has put in an awful lot of work to make it happen. It's obviously very important. I believe it is, yes. As I understand it, Lord Strawnhard organized the entire event himself. I think he's hoping that by achieving exponential results, he'll get the job of Attorney General. The most senior position in the British justice system. 
He's hoping to use his power to create the world's finest policing institution. That's what Father said, anyway. Apparently, it's Lord, Lord Strongheart's lifelong ambition. I'm learning a lot about Strongheart. Does Professor Mikotoba know Lord Strongheart personally, then I wonder? Actually, Lord Strongheart gave me a long speech all about all about this very subject only yesterday. But I sort of lost the will to live early on and didn't really listen to much of it. God. Seeing the, the line, but I sort of lost the will to live is very funny for some reason. How trying for you. Giselle Brett. Let's talk about the bitch. Giselle Brett. The woman whose unforgivable actions ended in me being wrongly accused of a crime I didn't commit. The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson. Yeah, good thing you didn't say that out loud, considering Iris is right here. Yeah. Yes, Giselle Brett. That's a name I won't forget for as long as I live. The extraordinary thing is, though, it seems it's a name we should all forget. Sorry? Since the incident, our government's intelligence services have been investigating Miss Brett. But it turns out that an English woman by the name of Giselle Brett didn't actually exist. What? D didn't exist? But how can that be? It was a pseudonym. Her real name was Shin. And she wasn't a visiting student either. That was a front. A front? Who? Who on earth was she then? Miss A. Shin. Her name is literally all our intelligence services have been able to as ascertain about her. Asian. 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 Oh my. I just realized that's one of the four names that was on the thing! That was freaking. Okay, at the end of. At the end of the first game. We had that freaking. There was that freaking. Uh, what do you call it? Morse code. That Japanese Morse code telegram. And it had the names for Tobias. Tobias Gregson. Kazuma Sogi. A Shin. Or Asian, basically. It's it's a joke. Asian. That's real funny that her name is. Her, her name is Asi Asian, considering how English she acts. And then there was a fourth one, and I forget the name of the fourth one. Was it... Was it... Was it John H. Wilson? It might have been. Nobody knows why or even how she came to be in Japan. It's a complete mystery. But, but that makes no sense. It's no easy task to be accepted as a foreign student anywhere. What could the woman possibly have been up to? I'm afraid I really don't know. The only thing we can be sure of... Is that she had some business in our country that we don't yet understand. We're gonna have to get to the bottom of her, then. Uh, dead, dead women tell no tales, though, so I guess we're gonna have to figure it out by other means. And now she's been killed. All the questions surrounding her existence remain unanswered. I'm afraid so. Asian. Asian. Who on earth was she? And why do I feel as though I've heard that name before somewhere? Oh, you have. You have, Ryunosuke. Please, jog your memories and jog mine too, because I forget what the fourth name was, because there was... I know there were four. And the thing about Kazuma, this is the bi probably the biggest one. After my friend Ray's trial, the reporter who actually killed Miss Brent said something very strange. Oh, this. I know the truth. I know you had a hand in what went on. In the visiting student's fate. Nobody here in Japan knows anything about it. They don't know that the guy never made it to England. That he died on the steamship. That he'll never... Obviously, I couldn't ask him to elaborate at the time. But later, I visited the man in his prison cell and asked him what he was going to say about Kazuma-sama. Oh shit, so she actually did get the rest of that. And what did you learn? Please say it. After he died on the voyage to Great Britain, 
His body should have been unladen at the port of Hong Kong and passed into the care of the consul consulate staff there. His corpse is nowhere to be found, isn't it? Oh my god. It's the fucking... It's the mass dude! It's the mass dude! Oh! Oh shit! Should have been? Well, it turns out that his body never arrived. It just disappeared. What? Kazuma's body vanished? Our government tried to cover the fact up, it seems. They erected a grave on the cliffs by our hometown. Right, we started off the game by seeing that grave. Except, Kazuma-sama isn't in there. Did, did Professor Mikotoba know about this? Yes, it would seem that he did. Kazuma's alive. He's fucking alive. I cried for you! I actually shed tears over this man dying in the last game. Back in case two, I cried for this man's death. He got a sad theme and everything, and I ate that shit up. And now he's alive. Ah, my entire life is a lie. But he didn't tell me. They're still investigating what happened to Kazuma-sama's body as we speak. Yo, I am just saying, I, I don't know if it'll happen this episode or next. But to anyone that's seeing this, stay tuned for next time, for when I go to frickin' Von Zyke's place. Because I am instantly going there in order to find that dude. In order to see how Susato reacts to, to him. I, I just don't believe it. And what is this acute feeling of appre apprehension I have all of a sudden? Yes, please tell us more. Thinking back now, some of the things that happened on the SS Buria were definitely strange. Like the fact that he died by tripping over a cat. I mean, after he died, we never saw his body again, did we? This is true. Was his death faked? Could it be? Could it be? That he's actually still alive? Stop it, Mr. Narhoto. It's too much to bear. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Just thinking about the possibility pains me. So very much. It's the truth, though. I know it in my soul. That's, that's not even me talking as Ryanosuke, that's just me. I know he's alive. I refuse to believe otherwise. Cast your mind back for a moment, Mr. Naruto. When Kazuma-sama was discovered, Mr. Sholmes was there, wasn't he? Mr. Sholmes is in on it. What else is there to say? Obviously, he he knows this so... We know that he at least met Asogi at one point because of the, uh, the frickin' side story. I don't even know if those side stories are all considered canon, but there was one at least. There was the one on the Buria. And he definitely examined the body. I remember it clearly. Yes, because he's part of it, he's part of the cover-up. I don't know why the hell do we need to fake Kazuma's death, but... Uh, you're... you're right. So if Kazuma hadn't actually been dead at all, it would mean that Mr. Sholmes had lied to us. But there's no reason why he would possibly have done such a thing. You know, Iris is just right off screen hearing all this, by the way. I suppose that's true, yes. Shit, there's a lot to think about here. The idea that he might still be alive somewhere. He wants to fill me with hope, but I can't let it. Because if it turned out not to be true, then I'd be back at the bottom of that awful pit of despair again. I'm terrified of what that might do to me. Oh, Mrs. Sato. I know she's given the idea the thought it deserves. It's a Sato son we're talking about, after all. So I probably shouldn't push it now. Definitely not. Oh, shit. That was a lore dump and a half. My mind is shattered. Mind... Put the tag of mind break on this, why don't we? Hi, Iris. It must be about a year ago now. I wrote a really long story based on some of my father's old notes. 
It's about one of Heli's greatest exploits. It's called the Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah, we know about that. But then Mr. Schultz, Sholmes forbade you from publishing it. And put the manuscript somewhere nobody could get their hands on it. Yeah, just like he forbade you from talking about the cursed lodgings. So nobody knows anything about it apart from Hurley and I. But for some reason... You knew the title of it, didn't you, Susie? Oh, right, that. Oh, it sounds so exciting, The Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. You know, this is... this is... I like how they were able to keep the consistency in the outfits for Case 1-1, but they couldn't do it for Case 1-5. And you wouldn't tell me how you'd come to know it. Yes, but I made you a promise that I would explain one day, didn't I? I think it's time. Oh, shit. Oh! Now the question is, is this actually going to be a big plot point or no? I'm only sorry I've had to keep it from you for so long, Iris. What is this music? Do 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 I've... This is very good music, whatever it is. It was completely by accident that I came to know the title of your manuscript, script, Iris. It was a short while before we left Japan. I was cleaning Father's study and I saw something on his writing desk. Oh god. A large box of papers. There was a label affixed to the box that was written in English. It read, The Hound of the Baskervilles. What? My Baskerville story? Of course, I had no idea what it was at the time. But Father came in and... Susada, what are you doing? Susada, what are you doing? Oh, Father. Did you look at those papers? No, I, I simply read the label, that's all. Well, put it out of your mind. Sorry? Forget that you ever saw it, and certainly don't tell anybody else about this. Do you understand? I don't even remember if that was my voice for him. I've seen the student in two separate cases. Why can I not remember my voice for him? But what was Iris's manuscript doing in Japan? I have no idea. But when I heard Iris mention the word Baskerville that day, the title just slipped out. I would never have guessed that it was an unpublished account of one of Mr. Sholmes' exploits. Well, I think we can tell that that's related to Wilson. When I returned to Japan, I asked Father to explain. But he refused to answer any of my questions. Sounds about right. There is some deep government conspiracy cover-up bullshit going on. And I'm very excited either across this case, next case, and the final case to figure out as to what. And there was no sign of the big box in his office. Big box? Wait. That's really all I know about it. Are we sure that's not the exact same box that's in Sholmes' suite? I have no doubt that Father has a very good reason for telling so, for being so secretive about it, but still. I made up my mind to explain myself to both of you. Well, thank you for being so honest, Susie. Okay, I guess we're done here. So, Mr. Narhoto, I'm ready to start investigating if you are. I've committed every detail about the case to memory. And Iris has told me about the disturbing happenings at the Waxwork Museum as well. So, you're fully abreast of the situation already, Mrs. Sato. I'd expected nothing less, to be honest. Sasuga. Sasuga Susato-sama. I would think our first port of call to be investig would to be to investigate this Mr. Drebber. The engineer responsible for building this elaborate machine that was used that was used to effect this extraordinary trick. 
Yes, a conjurer of sorts by the sound of it. Well known in the fields of science and magic. Then we need to go and arrest him. Well, yes. He must know the truth behind this case, so I agree we really do need to find the man. Hmm, it sounds like it's a case of tracking someone down. Which is a job for the police, or a great detective. We're supposed to guess who she might be thinking of. We don't have much time, so we need to get started straight away, I think. Good idea. Well, best of luck then. Oh, you're not coming today? I'm going to Brixton Road shortly for for the urban market. But let me know later how you got on, won't you? Adios, Cyrus. That was a little abrupt. The pull of the, of the urban market must be strong. Madam Tuspels. I can't even tell what... Oh, you fucker. This game knew what I was gonna try to do! Ah! You... This game, literally the only place I can't visit. They literally removed this place because they knew I would freaking go there right off the bat. This game is reading my mind just like Susado reads the mind of Ryanosuke. Ah, fine, let's go to Shones of the Sweet first off. Let's go down the list, I guess. Do we get any new conversations? I do like this fireplace. One of the best things I've seen since we were in the country, in fact. Okay, we've seen this before. Do be careful, Miss Narhoda. Don't mistakenly put your feet into the fire, will you? You'd suffer terrible burns, you know. I worry sometimes about how Susada-san sees me. I think we've seen all this before. This might be the same. Uh, oh wait, I gotta move it. I got to move it, move it. Famous violin, the one he found. Shoddy something. World famous Stradivarius. Stradol. Stradivarius. Okay, yeah, this is the same. We've already gone over this conversation. Or Chief Justice Office. Somehow I doubt we're gonna. Who are you? I was not expecting to see a freaking new person here. Oh, who's that standing beside Lloyd Strawnhart? I wonder. I've never seen her before. Who in the hell? Ah, oh, the young, the young champion of the court. You had some success this morning, I understand. And you've thrown the entire government into disarray as a result. Oh, you you mean because of Professor Hairbrain's experiment? Sham science being demonstrated at London's Great Exhibition. The country's been made to look foolish, and now politicians are scrabbling to respond. Lord von, Z Lord von Zykes is in is in Whitehall as we speak, giving an emergency briefing. Oh dear, I am. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. None of this is your responsibility. The government is entirely to blame for having been taken in. A special dispensation that prevents investigation at the scene will be annulled later today. Once that happens, my forensic investigation team will move in and deal with that scrap metal in no time. It's scrap metal now, is it? Until later then, Lord Strongheart. I feel like I should use like a... I don't know who you are, but I feel like I need to use like a deeper voice for you. Until later, Lord Strongheart. Yes, thank you. Who was she? Um, who was that? That was Dr. Courtney Scythe, Scotland Yard's esteemed chief coroner. A coroner, huh? She's leading the forensic investigation team's ha handling of this case. She was just delivering her report about the victim, in fact. Oh, I see. About Mr. Hasman. Following the outcome of the trial earlier, I asked the coroner's office to reevaluate its findings. 
I don't have time to tell you what she concluded. If you want to know, you'll have to ask her directly. You can find her in the forensics lo laboratory. Ah, right. Ah, new location? Now, what were you here to see me about? I can give you 7 minutes and 39 seconds of my time. So he's not running quite as spe so spectacularly late anymore. Alright. I don't even know what I have to talk to you about, really, but we'll talk anyway. anyways. What exactly is the forensic investigation team that you mentioned before? The British Empire's police force must become the most exemplary in the world. For that to happen, it's imperative that we embrace forensic science and everything it has to offer. I first created the forensic investigation team a year ago now, unofficially, of course, to pave the way. Goodness, a year ago? At next month's symposium, I intend to, pre I intend to present the results of their work to the world. Once I do that, the House of Lords will be powerless to oppose the creation of, the, of a full-scale forensics division. And once that happens, the position of Attorney General will be mine, and criminals will suffer dearly. What do you mean? For too long, those scoundrels have made a mockery of our legal system with false evidence and bribes. But London's scum is about to be rounded up and burnt in the fires of hell. I intend to see to it personally. By creating the finest police force the world has ever known. To protect our honor and our future. Look at those eyes. He means every word. Dr. Scythe is an extremely reliable coroner. When I officially establish the forensic division at Scotland Yard, she will run as its right-hand woman. Now then, speaking of the symposium, Miss Mikotoba. Oh, uh, yes, my lord. Your father should be on the high seas as we speak, making his way here to represent the Empire of Japan. Yes, that's right. I understand he will arrive at the beginning of next month. Are you acquainted, Lord, Str Lord Strongheart? With Professor Mikotoba, I mean. That's on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to fucking know, bitch. It was many years ago now, but yes, I remember Dr. Mikotoba very well. I was not expecting this. If my memory serves, it was some 15 years ago now that your father came to Britain as a visiting student. It was the year I was born. So yeah, 16 years ago, in fact. Mikotoba was a young practitioner of forensic science, and Jigoku accompanied him as a young promising judge. The punk... The punctiliousness and politeness of the Japanese at the time impressed us greatly. Not that I wish to imply impoliteness or carelessness on your part in any way. I didn't think that you were. Dr. Mikotoba studied forensics at one of London's largest hospitals. St. Sitters, if I'm not mistaken. Dr. Seif was also there then, as it happens. Then, Dr. Seif knows my father, does she? She was a young medical assistant at the time, so I doubt their paths cross regularly. But I've no doubt that they knew each other superficially. After all, Dr. Mikotobo was here studying his subject for some six years in total. Six years? That's a long time to be studying abroad, isn't it? I lived with my grandmother in those years. So he left his newly born daughter behind and went overseas for six whole years? It was a rather turbulent time at home. Oh. Perhaps father wanted a reason to get away. What do you mean? Why? Ellipses. Well, clearly something was going on at the time. And finally, we'll talk about Lord Von Zykes. I wanted to ask you about Lord Von Zykes, actually. I heard that his older brother was killed some years ago. 
by a mass murderer known as the Professor, who targeted nobles and royalty, is that right? You Japanese are a thorough lot. You've done your research well. Yes. And you could say it was that very incident that gave rise to the Reaper. What? Why? When his brother, Clint Van Zykes, was murdered. It was just after Jan, Jan Barrick had graduated from the University of London and become a prosecutor. When obvious criminals who managed to evade conviction in court started disappearing. Rumors quickly spread throughout the capital. Londoners started to say that when, wherever Barrick von Zykes went, the ghost of his dead brother wasn't far behind. Oh my word. So, Lord Van Zykes isn't the Reaper. It's the ghost of his brother? Oh, sorry. I thought that was Susada. That was Rinosuke. Ever since that time, he became a very aloof figure in London's legal circles. Wow. Cool story, bro. Oh, yes. Uh, Lord Stronhart. Go ahead. It's about Professor Harebrain's experimental machine. We'd like your permission to examine the remains, if possible. Are you well versed in science, then? Not in the slightest. In fact, you could say I was i was barely aware of the subject at all until recently. Well, the special dispensation legally preventing investigation of the machine is currently being annulled. Within a few hours, Dr. Seif's team of forensic experts will begin their own investigation. But I suppose until then, there's no harm in you looking at the wreckage, as long as you touch nothing. Thank you. Being able to look at it is better than nothing. And I'll be able to see it too. Your time is up. You'll have to excuse me now, I'm afraid. My next engagement calls. We are extremely sorry to have troubled you when you are so busy, my lord. I have important matters to attend to in preparation for the symposium, you understand. And thus I must go. My people need me. We have a new place we can go. And... Hmm... I think we'll head... We'll start off by going there, actually, next time. So, yeah, next time on Gradius Attorney 2, we'll head to the... What is it? Experimentation Laboratory? Is that what it was called? No, Forensics Laboratory. I was thinking of the experimentation stage and this combined. Next time, we'll head to this new area and see what we find. And we'll talk to the coroner and see what's found out. Adios, ciao, and bye-bye. Signing off until next time. Ja, matane.